Mm, so hi. We're live. We're live. I see Javier Perry said hi already. Is we back? There you go. Okay. This will be interesting to see if anybody comes today because this is not our normal day. I did tell people about it, but we're going to do it anyway. Y'all find it later. If you can't make it, we'll just have to carry on. But anyway, what we're going to do today is interesting. It is how to take the brass and the pewter, especially the pewter findings from BC by 1928, and change them up a little bit. So that they're like not as bright. Hey, there's Colleen. Woohoo, she's the first one. Let that go to the record. Colleen Bullocks was the first one here. Um, we're going to show you how to like gray it down a little bit. There's hello from Alberta, Canada. That's C. Shappy. Thank you for coming, hon. Glad you came. Um, when this stuff come, first came in, I thought to myself, I love it. I'm nuts about it. Just to show you how bright and yellow and gorgeous it is. I mean, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see it. It's just beautiful. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Do you think so, Javi? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she likes it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's put it on here. Okay. Now you can see it then. <laughs> oh, that's her, oh, that. that's her evil laugh. <laughs> that's her evil laugh. Look at it. <laughs> it's like treasure. <laughs> yeah, you want to sift your fingers through it like it's real gold. But it's not. It's pewter with gold dip. It's not even gold plating. Believe me, if this was gold plating, guys, you couldn't afford it and neither could I. Gold plating, real, seriously, good, high carat gold plating. This is 22 carat dip. If it was 22 carat gold plate, you guys would say, Brent Sue, you're nuts. I'll save up for real gold. Because it's, it's very high. But this is gold dip, and it's um, like a wash where they continue, pu continually put the stuff on it. And it's very, very good. Very, very good stuff. Better than most. It's, you know, my pistol of a plater out there, uh, he designs these finishes, and he's very good at them. I only use the best. I've been with him now for over a decade. We've had a lot of fights, too. <laughs> <laughs> but he always comes through in the end. So anyway, you can see how bright it was. All right. Well, I thought to myself, oh, this is gorgeous. But I wonder if everybody's going to like that. Because this line from the beginning has focused on antique finishes. Unusual antique finishes like uh, the gingerbread here. You know. And the rusted iron, which I don't have right here with me. But you guys know. So I'm like, I don't know. Well, anyway, so far, so good. People love it. But I'm like, here, I'm going to give you an option of how you can make it antique gold if you want to and really make it look good. And also how you can put patina on it without having to do a dip into a solution. Um, just a few other little things that I found out using various markers. And no, we're not using Sharpie pens this time. I've got a new product here to show you. And no, I don't have the site yet. But they should be on their way. Let's just put it that way. Um, so I'm really anxious to show this to you today because I'm just having so much fun with it. Let's see who's all here now. Patricia Maud. Hey, Maud. Hey, Patricia. Green Macaroni. yee Hi, Julie. <laughs> She's here. Jan's here. Linda Dupra. Hey, Deborah Bullock is here. Awesome. You guys are awesome. So glad you could make it. <laughs> oh, and, and the chicken's here. I'm here. Just, I'm here. Why well, he's not in there, honey? Oh. Here's the chicken. Oh, there he is. There okay. he is. <laughs> She's got to have her rubber chicken. Anyway, okie dokie. So, Javi, do you want to apologize to them first before you get started? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. I was sick. You didn't want to have it. Nobody else wanted to have it, but everybody got it. She just woke up, <laughs> excuse me, barfing. Yeah, it was a really bad stomach flu. Uh, do you want to tell them about what happened then? You had to go to Chicago for your passport and what happened then? <laughs> I had to bring a couple of my family members and they all had the stomach flu and they were barfing in the car. <laughs> <laughs> so they went all the way to Chicago from Ohio yeah. barfing barfing and she had to go to the the whatever building it is for mm -hmm. it to to get her passport line she has to do that what every two three years or something i, I think it's every eight years yeah she has to get that all fixed up because she has uh got all of her ducks in a row let's just say she's got everything <laughs> done right so anywho 
So she had to go do that, and they went barfing all the way. <laughs> Can you imagine how many, and they had diarrhea? <laughs> sorry, you, you, you guys just want to know. Was just, well, she came back and told me about this, and I'm like, oh, Abby, I'm so glad you didn't go to work. I was like, oh, that's all what I need is that. Oh, man, it no, was bad. No, I need to watch this. It was bad. Yeah, Colleen says, what an unforgettable trip. Oh, yeah, I don't think they'll ever forget that, that one. That is so true. Because that sounds just miserably, oh, miserable. Anyway, oh, no, Javi, Julie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she could tell you about it when she sees you in May, Julie, if you want to, yeah. if you want to hear. The extra details. Yeah, all the extra. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone wants it. But anyway, let's get to it, okay, guys? So let's start first by showing you um, what I'm using. Okay, for the black antique, I am using flat black testers, paint pens, which I don't carry because I can't ship them because they're hazardous material. So, and we use the mail, so it won't work. So you'll have to source them somewhere else. Many have. Actually, you don't have to have this. You can use black acrylic paint out of a bottle and it'll do it. But I like this because the way it flows. It flows so nicely. You know what? I should have some gloves on. I'm going to look for a second, guys, and see if I've got a pair down here because, yeah, this is messy. So if you want to do this, you might want to consider gloves. You can, you can get it cleaned up. Um, the other product I'm going to show you today is water-based. So... Um, you know, they'll t t definitely come off, but uh, the testers is not. So you might have to rub a dub dub and scrub a dub dub and make your skin sore, get it off. So let's just not go there. So let me put my gloves on. Hey, the chicken might like them. Like my gloves. Might be gloves. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. Let's get back to it, not be stupid. <laughs> All right, so I used this paint pen. And that's what I used on this piece and this piece and this piece and this piece and this piece. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what the gold looks like without. You can see very, very, very bright, very, very, very shiny. Very, very, very bright. Okay, now to, to show you next one to the next. Okay, here's one bright and shiny. Here's one that's antiqued. I don't know if it show up so good, but it's very subtle. It looks like a beautiful antique gold. It's not too much, but it's just enough. And also, it brings out the detail in the piece, which if you know this piece from Piece of 1928, it's got a lot of detail in the bowl. Let's see if I can pick this up a little bit to the camera this way, this way. There you go. Okay. You can see the detail in there now because of the black paint and now here's this little sister twin that doesn't have that black paint in fact we're giving these away this week guys i don't know if you're aware of that if you have an order that's a hundred dollars after coupon use we're giving you one of these and i wouldn't be able to sell one of these for less than twelve dollars now because of the fancy finish on it but anyway you can see you just don't see the detail in it right and now you can get one free if you if you're able to do one of those orders, if you're not, don't worry about it. You know, I'll have them again some other time. But um, you can see this is what you can do. You can really change it up, and now you can bring that detail out. You can still have the richness of gold. So that's what it looks like one to the other. Um, and then here's this piece. Everybody likes this piece a lot. It's got the vining flowers and the little. We've even got the connector, the centerpiece connector. We have the dangle, the little. Rose connectors, a lot of pieces to this. I don't have them all yet, but I hope to someday. Um, you can see this is the one that is not antiqued. You know, it would show better. For, yeah, yeah, Javi, that's thank what I was you. Because yeah, it's all those spots. How can you tell anything? Okay, that's the one that's not antique. You see how bright it is? It's gorgeous. And you can see the detail, but check this out. This has got the little bit of blackening on it. And now it's popping. That flower is just popping right out of there. You can see all the vines and everything. So you've got a gorgeous antique gold now with that. And it's so easy to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the other one. 
So now I'll have a pair, and then I'll have to make myself a pair of earrings, won't I? Okay. So I use the testers. And as you can see, I'm going to show you here <clears throat> how what I mean by runny. It's, you see how it's just not quite a black black. It is black. If you were here, you could see a little bit better. It's more like a dark charcoal. There's no shine to it. It's just blackening. And it's very fluid coming out. That's why I like it. Not all markers are so fluid. <clears throat> so when I go to apply, it goes on super simple. Just start, you know, marking it. Sometimes I find I need two coats, but that's not a problem. And of course you can press on it to release a little bit more of the liquid blackening. And then when you get to the flower, if you want to get it good, you need to kind of push it down in there. Now I've got a blob, so what can I do about that? Well, I'll see if I can get it to run out onto the rest of the stuff so it's not wasted. Or you can just take uh, a tip of uh, this bounty paper and just stick up to it and it has a wicking quality where we'll just take the excess off. Just suck it up, basically. That's what happens. Uh, I put my finger on there, now I gotta do it again. Okay, but you can see how quickly that happened. And now all the detail is out for everybody to see. Now, I got a little bit more on this one than I did on this one, so I'm going to have to wick a little bit away because I like them to, you know, look like they kind of match because I'm going to make earrings. So I'm just going to take a little square of, of bounty, and I'm just going to stick it in there. See, it just sucks it right up. I think this is so cool. <laughs> just sucks it right up. Takes it all off for you. You don't have to rub and scrub. Yeah, it just takes it off. Okay, that's good. Now, so, let's see how good it matches to this one. Because if it's a little too much, then what I'll do... Yeah, it's a little bit more. Well, maybe I'll put a little bit more on the other one. Because you can do that. Now, this paint pen, it's... it's uh, if you're familiar with Tester's Paints... You know, if when you were a kid, um, if you go back as far as me, you remember when your brother made model cars and stuff like that, you'd get them at the Woolworths or whatever, and you'd go home and you'd put them together, and the glue made you high as a kite, and so did the paints, and the paints you used were testers' paints. They're hobby paints. Make them to this day. And they are a little bit uh, smelly. They're wifty. You know, if you if you use this a lot, you should have, which I'm not going to do, so I'm not worried about it, but if I was going to have a session of using testers for a lot, I would have a fan on me or some kind of air source where the air is flowing a little bit because I'd get a powerful headache, and it wouldn't be healthy. It wouldn't be a healthy headache if there is such a thing. So anyway, but you can see they're matching up pretty good now. Let's see. Let's put them over here in the plain white. You can see it better this this way and it's just as easy as that there it is I'll put them over a little bit more and it's just as easy as that you know but you can see there's such a difference between that let's see do I have another one in the sack yeah I do so I put original one next to it again so you can really see the difference it made see there's the there's the original without antiquing and here's the one that have me antiquing. Okay, another thing you could do. After this is perfectly dry, and I would say that would be tomorrow. Then you could take your steel wool and you could distress it a little bit. And buff a little bit of that back if you felt it was more than you wanted on there. See who else is here. Karen Eaton is here. Karen Bitter is here. Teresa German is here. Julie, yeah, I use the tester's pen, so just, if everybody can keep up, that's good. If not, go ahead and ask, but uh, let's try to move along a little bit. Anyway, it's a tester's pen. So, um, anyway, so that's how I did my black. Now, I got the other day from one of my suppliers um, a set of these Impress Art 
pens. I don't know if you guys have seen these before. They're for stamping, like, you know, when you do metal stamping, and some press art is known for that. They have all their little fonts and stuff. Um, I bought a set because I just want to try them out because I'm, you know, I'm always curious about new paint pens. I have every paint pen known to man. And I didn't have these, and they're lacquer paint pens. And I thought, well, okay, let's see what's up with these. I like them a lot. They're a little bit spendy. I did order a few sets. You're not going to like the price, but you will like the products. You may find out that it's worth it to you. I know it's up to you, but I'm in love with these, especially the green one. And at this point, I can't buy them separately. So, I mean, I will be able to probably later, but if you're going to get into it, go ahead and get into the whole set. That's my feeling. Anywho, this is the result. This is uh, the old silver. And I don't know if I have any more old silver. Let me just, I'm going to just turn around here for a minute and see what I got. Because I had parts set aside for my line. Yeah, for build line. Okay. So I can do another one and show you. You are going to, you're just going to love this. It's like you can put patina on, but you don't have to do chemical processes fast. Okay, I know you can use some vintage products, and that's a good one too. Acrylic paints, Gilder's paste is excellent. But this is just so quick and easy and so pretty. So let's just let me shut up and show you. This is that fantastic mount we just got in gold. So what you do is shake them up a little bit first. And you might notice too, this is so cool. On the cap, they give you an extra nib. So if your nib wears out, you can pop the old one out and put a new one in. This is ingenious and very thoughtful of the company as well. And I think they're going to last a while. So you just open it up. And uh, this one started, of course. But if you, if you haven't started yours yet, you just do it like any other paint pen. Just kind of dink it down on a hard surface until the ink flows. And it takes a little while on these, but you'll, it'll come. Okay, and then you just start going for it. So I'm going to go for it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of go light and then wipe. So it'll look not too much. And that's another reason why it's good to have these rubber gloves on, because I can just do that. So it looks like a patina over it. Now this would also look really good on the gingerbread especially. And I'll show you an example in a minute. I'm loving this stuff. This is just the best patina color I've found yet. It's so subtle. And it goes on so easily. It's like I don't ever want to use anything else. I don't have anything on my rim. I don't know if I want anything on my rim. I, mean, I could decide that later. But you can see how that went. Okay? I mean, um, can you bring, where's that black paper again, honey? We'll stick it on that and you can see it better. Can you see now? You just put that around. I'll put the other two pieces I did on there too. These I put a little bit more on. But they're it's absolutely gorgeous and they're still it still kind of look um washed out on here i don't know where i put my cat was under here i'm sure um let me see if i can yeah here it is i don't like to anytime you're using paint pens guys don't leave your cap off too long because that contributes to, to them um, drying out prematurely that's the bad thing about paint pens they dry out and i don't know what the record is on these impress art ones yet for drying out Hopefully they don't dry out very fast. I know I had, I have two green ones. And the green one I have, I've had for six months. And it's good. So maybe that'll tell you. But anyway, just to lift this up here a little bit more, maybe it won't be so shiny. Let's see, can I get it? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. You can see how gorgeous it is. Which is this way? Mm -hmm. There you go. Perfect. There okay. You can see how gorgeous this is. And then when I was done, I have to go back and put a little bit on the back. So you want to make it, you know, completely done. You don't want it halfway done. And that's the same way with when you paint brass. You do both sides. You finish both sides. I don't really 
care to see a piece where on the other side it's not finished with something, whether you do shabby whites or a quick spray of uh, some kind of brown or black or whatever to finish off the back, or paint it the same color, either way, however you want to do it, it's best. But it's so pretty. And then on this one, I used the patina over the old silver. This is the old silver piece of 1928. More down. More down? There you go. Yeah, more down. She says more down. And it's very, very subtle. There's some right around the edges, and then I got a little bit too much. So what I did is I still wooled a little off, and then I took a little bit of the flat black testers and went over it, and they blended fine. Not They didn't interfere, interfere with each other. And I brought a little bit more of the antique back, and this is just so subtle and beautiful. I can't wait to make a pair of earrings out of these with this coloration. So beautiful. But anyway, this is pretty light. And let me lift this up. <clears throat> see if I can get it in the right place. Here. Yeah. Okay, I'll lift it up. You can see it's very subtle. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go around it again and get it on pretty thick. And then leave it. I'm going to dry real good, and then I'm going to stress them off, and it'll really look like good patina. Now, as for me, I don't think I want it on this place. You're going to find with paint markers, if you're going to use them on something, always going to be better on a rough surface, like filigree or something with a pattern. On flat surfaces, they're going to wash out, not look so good. Um, just not the best. I mean, you can make it work, but... It's not something I usually do. And then in here, this is where, you know, you'll glue something in here. So don't put any paint or anything in there because you will need to distress it back off because it could interfere with the glue and the adhering. Sometimes too much paint, if you don't rough it up a little bit before you glue to it, you're actually gluing to paint, not to the metal. And then you're not going to get a really good bond that way. It could pop out no matter what kind of glue you use. It's best in the world, it could happen. So if you're gluing something, so you distress your piece first. Um, if you paint your piece first, you need to distress it and rough up the top a little bit wherever it is that you're going to be gluing because that could happen. Okay, so let me put this back down for another layer and I'm going to look and see who else is talking to us today. Let's see, who else? Michelle Flores, Sherry James, Catherine. How you doing, honey? You're here. Jacqueline. Does it dry quickly? Yes, it does. But it, I wouldn't say you can go ahead and use it the same day. It, it could stay a little tiny bit tacky. Um, normally on paint products, they tell you 24 hours. But yeah, it does dry quickly. Do I carry those pens? The Impress Art are on their way. I do not carry testers. Sharon Russ. Hey, she's new to us. Thanks for coming, Sharon. Marsha. Yes, you do love that shade of green. I remember that. So, okay, let me go ahead and do something else with this. Oh, you know, and I wanted to show you what it looks like on gingerbread. Now, there's just a little edge on this, and I did do it on a flat surface on here, um, on the edge, but here on the pattern, the typical... Uh, 1928 pattern it's on there let's see if I can pull it up a little there bit you'll see it more because it's kind of subtle but yeah it's on there and it just brings it out so much it just brings it out and it's very very subtle it brings it out so much and that pattern is so pretty I still to this day pinch myself I cannot believe this man has let me have his components to have my way with them I just such it's a prestige line and they let us do this i mean it's it's amazing you just nobody else does this and then when he sees this he's going to be real pleased he's going to say hey maybe i'll try that yes he would um anyway so i'll put that aside so i'm going to go back and i'm going to put a little bit more green these two i'm done with i'll put a little bit more green on uh the silver now I've done a little bit of this over the gold and I'm not as crazy about it gingerbread good a rusted iron be excellent but the gold is just not talking to me and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do after I get this paint on here a little thicker I'm gonna take a piece of gold and put it on it so you can see what I'm talking about then you'll know but the reason I'm putting this on thicker is because, I don't know if I said it, but I'm going to let this sit and tomorrow come back tomorrow and I will distress some of it off.
And then if I think I need more, I can apply more then. Or even another color. I could distress a little bit of this off and go back over it with a little bit of the flowing charcoal black from the tester's pen and make it really, the detail really pop. So there's a lot of ways you can go with it. So I'm going to set this aside. And I'm going to get you a gold piece. Let's see what one would be good. What would be good to try? I'm going to do this little heart. I'm always telling you they're on their way. I just wasn't sure that I was going to um, offer this, these paint pens, because... Um, the set is $30, but the more I got to use them, I said, you know what, I'm, normally, you know, I'm not investing in mixed media product anymore because I, I can't, you know, I just can't give all those coupons and stuff and then free shipping and everything else. And plus this company where I get these, it don't give me any break in shipping at all, none. So it's very, very low profit, but I just, I'm so, so in love with them. I just, hey, I'm going to take the chance. I'm going to bring them in, and if they like them, I'll keep having them. If not, I won't. But anyway, they're worth it. You're worth it. You're worth it to have the best. You're worth it. I always tell you that, self that. You know, we all have our limits of stuff we can't afford. You know, everybody does. If you can't afford a Lexus, you can't go buy a Lexus, right? But you want your car to keep you safe. You want it to serve you well. You want it to look nice. So you buy a car that you like that is the best you can afford. And that's the same with products like these. Fortunately, most of them aren't so pricey that you can't swing them at some point. Anyway, you can see, I don't know, I'll put this over here, maybe you can see a little bit better. I'm kind of liking it on this heart going around the edge. I'm kind of liking it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Beansy's hearts. She uses such muted pastels. Kind of reminds me a little bit of that. But I don't know till I get on here. Now, let's see, let's put it on the flower. Maybe we won't do the whole thing. Maybe we'll just do the flower. So I'm going to press it so the paint gets down in there. That's pretty, actually. So maybe you just got to play with it. The one thing I found is if you put this stuff on a piece, just do a little bit of it. And if you're not liking what you see, go ahead and get a rag, get it off quick before it starts to set up. I don't know if you can remove it with acetone later. I don't know about that. Because they're calling it enamel marker, so that usually means pretty permanent. But most things, if you get them quick, you can get them off. I like, I like it this way. With just the edge and yeah. the center. Because I think if... Okay, here's one with antique gold on it. And I did the whole piece. So you can see how different they look. But this is very rich. And this is very shabby chic, washed out, pretty stuff. I see some I'm going to have to distress off because it didn't go on. But see, that's the thing too. You can distress it off. Like if you don't get it even and stuff, you can distress it off later. So that's always good. So I might just leave this alone before I start glurping too much on and go back and do some layers. So it depends on the gold if you're going to like it or not. I wish this light wasn't reflecting so much glare because you could really see it's, it's wonderful. Um, Javi put some pictures up for the thumbnail, I think, show it pretty mm -hmm. good. Yeah. And we could take some pictures. I could take some pictures a little bit later out in the light box with my camera. My, not my camera, my phone. And maybe put them on the group and then you could see them that way. So that's good. Let's see what people are saying. Could you use a thing like that triple thick in it so save the patina? I'm not sure um, what you're asking me. You want to ask me again because it's a thing like that triple thick in it. Like triple thick, um, the thing I'm thinking of this triple thick is that sealant that you can get. Tell me what you mean a little bit more, and I'll I'll tell you what I had to. Do you have to spray Krylon after the paint pens? I would. I would. Yeah. You might get. Um, 
You might get away with not doing it, especially if you want a shabby look, you know. Um, but um, I would, you know, especially if you're going to sell it or give it to somebody, I would, you know. So, anyway. Um, so that's what I think, and it's my typical thing, Krylon or um, Swellingant Clear Coat is what I always use. And I do know that Swellingant Clear Coat works on these products, so there you go. That's what I would do. Okay, my question to, I would spray Krylon too. Yeah, and you want to use the matte because it's already glossy. Now, the only thing I'm concerned about, because I haven't sprayed it on this gold yet, which is very shiny, is sometimes... When you put a matte spray lacquer on something shiny, it will kind of matte it. Like if you ever have you ever done something with resin, and you did a matte spray lac spray lacquer over top of it, it will make it look like frosted. It's a cool effect, but it's probably not what you want on here. So um, that's a thought too. So you know, try one. I think you're gonna be okay though. And that's another thing with the spray lacquer. If you put it on, you see real quick you don't like it. You can, you can usually get it off if you're if you're quick. So that's another thing. Let's see. I found you. Yay for me. Yes. Yay for you, Judy Lynn. Very good. Thank you, Michelle. I thought they did a nice job with that article too. I didn't submit one for this last one. They're kind of in flux now. Stampy ten beings. How um, they're trying really basically to morph. Jewelry Affair and Bell Armour into one magazine. They still tend to go toward the dark, rustic looks. And I have to kind of search my soul a little bit for that because while I like those things and like to see them, it's not what I do. I, I like or, organic looks, but I, I don't like grungy looks. You know, so um, I have to find a way to mesh that type of look with what I do. You know, I can do it, but it's just kind of goes against my grain a little bit. So I have to figure that out. But anyway, that's what it looks like over the gold. It's just really pretty. Now let's talk for a minute about the... Oh, you know what? Here, I just want to show you a few more things. This I did with the black paint pen. You guys are probably familiar with the love bar. for the, It's a bracelet bar for the top of your wrist. Let's see if you get it in the frame. Yeah. When you have this in the gold and it comes in... There's no antiquing on it, and it's a little bit hard to see where it says love. But if you put some of that paint pen over there, you're going to be fine. It's going to look great. And it's very, very subtle, so that'll help you with that, so you'll know about that. And uh, So here's um, what the black testers looks like over our classic gold finish. Gorgeous. So easy to do. This is the brass now. This is not Bisuva 1928. It's gorgeous. It's so, so easy. I wonder if it, on the black it would show better, Javi. Probably I should just be doing this on black. <laughs> okay. Probably can see it better now, I hope. It's kind of far. Can you zoom in a little bit, maybe? I don't know if it's just uh, I'm not going to do it. Too. It's too much glare from this light. Let me turn it down a little bit. Nah. Ain't doing it. What if I lift it up? Still not doing it. That's just so. What if dumb. I lift it up? Because these really are not shiny. I know. No. But now if I turn some, you can see the detail there. We'll get you a picture for the group later, okay, guys? It's fantastic. To do this little heart is like you just put a little bit of paint in the middle and it runs off to the sides and just finds its way down in every crack and crevice. I mean, it's so simple you could do, you know, a hundred an hour, basically. It's so, so quick. Let's see. And then I did, um, this piece we like to use a lot and I used the black testers on it too. It's a flower thing, yeah. And it just brings out the detail so much. It looks really good. But the one I like the best is the raw brass leaf. Let's just get this out of the way so you can see. It starts out, you know, you guys all know this piece because I like use it constantly and so do you guys. Okay, the raw brass leaf, nothing on it, okay. So now this is with the patina 
the green patina from the Impress Art marker over top. Now they both look the same. <laughs> they are not the same. They are not the same. I don't know why it's doing it. It's just fading it out to nothing. I don't know. Maybe don't don't zoom in, Javi. Maybe zoom back out. What a disappointment. Yeah, this Maybe it's like better to hold them in Light blobs. So I'll hold them up. Yeah, let's stick that over there. We're going to have to find out what causes that so that it doesn't keep happening. So then I'll hold it up. Maybe you can see. Yeah, now you can see. See how pretty that is? It's so subtle and pretty. It's And you can see the gold still coming through. You could distress it a little bit more later if you want. Um, here's the... Here's the raw, so you can see them next to each other. I'll put my hand... Yeah, so you can see they're quite different. Okay, so we have that. Move this over. Then I have one that has silver on it, and this is the Impress Art. This is so subtle, subtle and pretty. This is with not very much on it, and this is with a little bit more. Let's see if I can just kind of hold my hand up to the little, get the glare. It's so subtle and pretty, I can't tell you. And then this one I used, the Impress Art has brown too, because brown antique works great, especially on gold, it looks great. So this is kind of a coppery brown. This came out great. And you know, you could go over the edges of this with a little bit of patina too to accent a little bit more. And that would be great. And then this is the one, let me put these down. This is the one that I found so interesting. You know, we have the aqua copper yet. Our chocolate brass is ordered. It's being made for us right now. Then I'll go to the players. And I think it'll probably be another three weeks before we have it. It takes time. But, and when it comes in, the aqua copper is going to come down. It will go off the site. But for now, there's still a lot of these left. These leaves in aqua copper. I don't know, last time I looked, there was around 70 of them. Because we had tons of them at the beginning. So I put this patina stuff on it over top of the dark. Let me see if I've got a piece of it and I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, this one's, I cut it a little bit, but you can see the difference. It just has a, a muted, dusty look to it. This is much darker, actually. But this with the patina over top is just luscious. It's so beautiful. So anyway, there's that that you can do with the markers. So for the black, in this video, I'm using the Testers Flat Black. And for the green, I'm using this Impress Art, the Silver's Impress Art. And the Impress Art kit, you get uh, green, gold, silver, and brown. And I'll just show you what the other colors look like. I haven't even started the gold one yet because I'm working with the gold, so I'm like, what do I need gold for? But <laughs> let's just open up. So you can see they start out, they're white, just like every marker. You got to get them going. So how do you do that? You do this. You just start very gently. You don't want to bang it. Just very gently coax it. Just coax it. Come on. Come on. It takes a while. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I see it starting to come now. Okay, so this will give you an idea what that gold looks like. I don't know what I have that I can put it on that you'll be able to see. Does it look like it's like Ooh. kind of shimmery actually let's see well let me find that's something different. see the brass is already yellow so that's not going to help there's a little bit of ginger but let's see that's probably dark Maybe enough it shines it it's yeah like probably little... oh hey let's do this oh we don't have so many of them to waste okay let's just do this okay so i have a silver heart old silver heart so let's just see what happens when we put a little gold. Maybe it'll be a pretty two-tone, or maybe it'll be awful. I don't know, but we're going to find out. Now, because it's new, you kind of have to work it to get it flowing. So it might not. Yeah, now it's starting to take. It's it, the filigree edge just fights me a little bit because it's it's rough and then it's flowing through to the back. Yeah, 
And I think I need a darker color. Yeah. yeah this I is, think the gingerbread would have worked. Yeah, let's just that. try it. Let's see what I've got though. Because I, I got pieces in here that I just don't really want to screw thing. up. You know, in case they don't work out, you know. Because these were pieces I took out from my line to do for my line. And that's not going to have glue on it. So. Oh, what the hey. Let's go for it. I think I got extra with the last load. Okay, this, we got the fancy. This is my favorite mount of all time. Let's go for it. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. That is very interesting. It is. It kind of like... It's like a fire. Yeah. I like it. You like it. <laughs> she likes it. It's all right. She likes it. Maybe, you know, Maybe do do it. one coat and then let it dry and distress it. And then, yeah, it's pretty. So you get this, you get the silver, you get the green, which you've seen, and you get the brown, which um, has this look. Where did it go? This look. On the gold, it looks like that. So, you know, you can see that it antiques nicely, the brown. So you get those four in the kit. And I suppose for good markers, when you divide it out, $30 a kit, they're seven fifty dollars each. Um, that's not so terrible, especially if you have an order where you qualify for coupons and you could get a chunk off, which always helps. Yep. They should be here sometime later next week. Unless their inventory counts are off, which happens, you guys know that. It happens to me, so it happens to them too. A lot of times I order stuff and I don't get it either. So, it happens. Yeah, that's pretty. And you know what? I'm thinking, um, just kind of wipe that off a little bit. It's kind of muted. I like it. It's really not gold and it's really not gingerbread. It's just something. You know, um, if you're part of the group that we have for the workshop, um, and if you're not, I'll put a link up at the, at the creative group today. So you can see, in fact, I'll put one in the comments here as well. Um, Athena Laird did some brass at the workshop last year where she did a color kind of like this, and she graduated out to a salmon pink, and it was striking. So I just have to find the right marker to go with it, or acrylic, and I could do that because this is the perfect color to do with it. Yeah, it's, it's actually quite beautiful. So there you go. You can put it on the gingerbread and change it up a little bit. So that's good. Now the one thing um, I also find interesting that you can do is I love the look of a bead cap that's colored. You ever do that, color your bead caps? Here's one. It's probably not going to show up on here for you, but it's just darling. It's just all shabby chic and distressed. And So I've got another one on here. And what I do to paint a bead cap is I put on a toothpick. There's your tip for the day. That's rocket science, right? Then I just start going over it. And you know, with the right bead, something that you've put color on, the bead cap is just going to make it pop. I love this look. I love it. It'd be good with so many different things. So I've got it on there successfully. Maybe now I'll take it off so you can see. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but then when you take it off your your toothpick, then go back over where the hole is so you get the rest of it. Because sometimes that you can't quite get that. But it's it's wonderful. I guess you can see that pretty good. Let me put it on my fingertip. Maybe you'll see it better. You can see it better now. It's still a lot better than that even. You know, this would really look cool, this patina color. It would really look cool over rusted iron, something dark. It would be fantastic. But it's good over this classic gold too. Very good. So there's that tip as well. Now, here's something I have not tried. And um, I've been meaning to do some experiments and then do a video on it because we're having a lot of this bronzy looking uh, zinc stuff coming in now, which is um, by no means does it approach the quality of B Super 1928. By no means. 
but it is sturdy. It is lead and cadmium free. The finish is supposed to be nickel free. And it is Chinese, yes, because that's where that stuff comes from. I'm kind of been taking a little bit different look at Chinese goods now. And I will sometimes bring something in so long as the company has, like, certificates out the wazoo. Because I want to be sure it's safe. I don't just buy from anybody. But anyway, this is, this is a good maker. But um, I'm just thinking, I've been thinking, you know, these, because they're so matte in color, they would be great for markers. And another reason I got them, too, is because um, my plater finisher guy cannot do brass ox over the pewter. Because if he could have done brass ox, that would have been the first color I would have brought in because it's our number one all-time best star. So now we can go with this bronzy look and get the, the feeling of it. So let's try this patina marker. I have a feeling like this might be really good. But I don't want it strong. I want it you know, kind of wiped off and shabby looking. But like if you have brightly colored markers, it will work good. Because I know I've done the metallic ones, the cheap ones from the dollar store on here, and they've been great. But these just don't have the detail to shine through. There's a little detail, but they're very cookie cutter. And they certainly don't come from antique molds. So, you know, there's just no comparison to these from 1928 but there are ways to work with these and make them look good and hey you know when there's stuff that's sturdy and good and you can make it look good and your buyer's gonna like it and you can save a little money then you should do it i'm not saying that you know because these are cheaper and chinese that they're substandard because i wouldn't have them somebody asked me the other day are you sure that about your plating uh, you should, it's just going on and on about the plating finish. And she says, Are you, you feel pretty sure about this? And I'm like, darling, I wouldn't carry it if I didn't feel sure. But my thing is plating. You guys know that. So if I think it's crap, it's not going to be on there. Or if somebody gets some and tells me it's crap, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interview them and find out why. And if they've got a point and I can and I can see that it's not just opinion because sometimes you know we just have different opinions and that's fine um, then it's gonna get pulled and thrown back and we're not gonna have it anymore because I don't do crap but anyway to show you the difference okay this is the Chinese uh, zinc and this is 19 let's put this here this is 1928 there's no comparison whatsoever. None. This is clearly the better product and always will be. And not only that, people are really getting to know that. I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and do the back too so you can see this even better. Um, people are really getting to know this mark. They're getting to know what this mark means. You know, for a long time we didn't know when we found pieces, you know, in the collectible, we didn't know who made this. We didn't realize that. You know, when we saw this, it meant that that was the 1928 marking and it was theirs. Um, but it's interesting, when Mel first made these for me, he says, do you want the marking in the back like we make it, or do you want it taken out? And I'm like, are you kidding me? That identifies it as being yours and identifies it as being quality, and that's the reason why I'm carrying it. So yes, by all means, please leave that there. Don't even dream of taking it out. He says, well, some people we work for, they don't want that in there. So I had to ask. And I said, well, okay, but no, this girl wants it in there. So <laughs> you can see, you know, how that looks and shows that up a little bit. So that's pretty cool. And I have to tell you a little bit too, guys. I am so proud to be writing this book. For a while, I was just kind of a little bit stalled. It's like the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, but I took a seminar this morning about doing this kind of thing. And as I went through the seminar, it was a seminar that was given by Jack Canfield. I don't know if you guys know who that is, but he's the man who wrote all the chicken soup books. And he's written half a million books. Not, not half a million, half a billion books. And he's a philanthropist, too, so he was doing this seminar for young authors to help them, you know. And... Um, excuse me, half the stuff that he said that we needed to do 
to get people to enjoy our book and to find value in it and to get it out there, I'm already doing. So I feel really hopeful about it. I feel really excited. The more I write about it, we're now into the um, last chapters of it where I write in first person. And um, it's getting interesting now because I'm putting my thoughts in there, not just reporting facts. And um, this story is outrageously good. Look at that. You can distress it with a piece of towel. It's, it's, it's an outrageously good story from which you will learn. You'll feel uplifted. And it's so nice because uh, Mr. Bernie said, this is not going to be just our book. You're, it's not going to be just a 1928 book. It's going to be our book, yours and the company. So I want you to weave your story in there because it has very much to do with it. Because I did virtually everything he did, especially at the beginning, on a small scale. Same thing. Same thing. It's probably why we get along so well because I understand where he's at. But anyway... Um, so he's letting me put that in there too, and it's just coming out so great. We hope we can keep it on schedule, but, um, the webinar I attended said that I am to tell you that I am the author, I am the author of the coming book, Making It 1928. It's going to be called Making It 1928, The Amazing Story of the 1928 Jewelry Company. I love that title. We have a fantastic cover. And I can't wait for it to be out so I can share it with you. Uh, I know I read little parts of it one time before, but you know what? That's not the book anymore. It's been so completely taken apart and redone. And, and the girl who's doing the editing for me, I was really tickled. She says, Brenda, you have learned how to become an author. You have really become able to write well. So I did see there was a change, but now the bad thing about it is when we go back to do the edits, I'm going to have to redo all the beginning chapters. But that's okay. It's all good. So I hope you enjoyed these markers. Let me see if anybody has any questions. Toothpicks, Q-tips. Oh, do you have to clean the pieces first? And what would you recommend? Apologies for not to ask. No. Um, I would just, in this case, there's, of the pewter, there's no residue because it's all tumbled after they do it and take it out of the molds. So it's, it's basically clean, soft, dry rag, and there's no machine oil on it. But if it's brass, like these pieces, oh yeah, oh yeah, you got to degrease it. And then what I do, and, and others of you may have your own way, some people have tumblers, and they will put it in a tumbler for a little bit with a half a cap full of Dawn or whatever, and a little bit of water or something, I don't know. I don't have the formula exactly, because I do have a tumbler, but I don't use it very much. Um, I should. It's a nice tumbler. Um, one of my pals from the group bought it for me, as a matter of fact. But um, I just, I'm not a big tumbler girl yet. If I got using it more, I probably would be. But anyway, some do it that way. But easy peasy way, if you don't have a tumbler, just make a sink full of hot water, as hot as you can stand, and put some Dawn in. Dawn is a fantastic degreaser. And uh, just wash it up under there with a brush, and then uh, rinse it off really, really, really good. And then make sure before you use it, it is bone dry. So if you want to use it quickly, you better get forced air on it like a heat gun or a blow dryer or something. But then be careful, let it cool off a little bit before you pick it up because it will be quite hot in that case. Okay, let's see if there are any more questions. Do you sell the paint pens? They're on their way, Deb. They're on their way. Um, love the gold or the brown. I do too, Pam. I like, hey, Mary, how you doing? It makes a difference. Black paper totally washes the antiquing out. It's, it's hard to see on here. We have really strong light, so it'll show up to begin with, and we're always experimenting with lighting. Um, I want the pen stands. I want the pens too, Jan. I want to be, oh, you know, another thing I tried on, um, uh, but I didn't like. If any of you guys have Copic markers, they're mostly for illustration and paper, but these are like the Cadillac of markers. At least that's what they say. They're, if you think the impress art are expensive, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> I just got a, the, the, yeah, these are very expensive. I think my starter set was a hundred bucks, you know, but I, I just was at that level in my journey that I had to have a set of Copics. 
So I got them, and uh, they're not so good. Uh, you know, I'll show you. This is I brought this color up because I thought it would be the best. And when you release it onto the paper towel, you can, you know, you can see it pretty good. And they're stinky too, by the way. Um, so I don't know what's in them, but I'm going to take one of these and show you. You just don't get that much from them. It might be better, like, if you were going over something else, maybe. You just, you get some color, but it's kind of a very, very weak, muted green. Um, I don't know if in another light it would make a difference, but as you see me doing it here, it's just hardly even changing. It's very muted. If I take it into another light, I'll see it on there, but it's just not enough for me to say, oh, you need to go buy a, a set of Copic markers so you can mark your brass with it. Because I just don't think Copic is that great for metal. It looked like it didn't mark No, it, it, uh, it did. There's a little bit on there, but it's just so, so muted that it's, not, it's, it. not, it's, like, it's like the color of gold green. It's not worth it. So if you have Copic markers, save them. Don't use them on brass. And it didn't work on the pewter at all. So they're not a good choice. So there's your little don't do that thing for this week. I always have to have a don't do that thing for you. Okay, one last thing before we take off today. You know, we didn't get to do the video last week because Javi was barfing. <laughs> I just call it as I see it, guys. And she doesn't seem to mind. She has a good sense of humor. So <laughs> Okay, I got plain white under here. Yeah, the chicken. Here she comes with the chicken. <laughs> Good thing Rob being here, he, he, we wouldn't even get eight. Listen to me. We wouldn't even get this far. But he'd be fiddling around with that chicken all the time. Anyway, I, I finished this piece. And if you've been on the creative group, that you've probably seen it. We started this the last time where I was doing the color. Can you hand me? Yeah, here it is. This is Marsha and Jan's. And I, I was tickled to see they're with us today. This is a Marsha and Jan's uh, tri-monthly challenge for January to March. So we have to finish up this month. And I so often do not get to do this with the group, and I lament that. So I'm trying to change my ways. And this month I challenged myself to do it, and I looked at this. When I started to get into it and have a look to see what I needed to do, I'm like, oh, dang. I am just not relating to this palette <laughs> at all. It's not that it's not a good palette. It's just it's not going through my pea brain. I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go line up and see what I've got in these colors. See if I can find paint pens or spray paint or whatever to work over the raw brass. And I'm going to have to see if I have beads in these colors, which typically yeah, I might not. Latte, maybe. I always go for these earth tones. So you'd think I'd love this <laughs> palette because it's earthy. But anyway, so that was my first challenge was getting up. But I did. I successfully got it pulled together. And I showed to you guys last time we were together and how I did my middle part. I got the color. This is just chocolate brown spray paint that I distressed after it set up. You can see better on the back. It's almost the color of, uh, oh, what is that? Caramels or toffee or something. But yeah, that's exactly what it looks yeah. like. Yeah. Chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> chocolate, she said. Yeah, gotta eat it. So anyway, um, I put that on, then I distressed it, and then what I did is I went at it too hard, and I got a big hole here, and then if I would paint over that, I was afraid it would still show, you know, like it could be a ridge or something there, so it says, oh, hopefully. Well, whipped out the tissue paper. Tissue paper cures all sins. So I did a little bit of tissue decoupage right here in the middle, just by tearing it and applying it with Mod Podge. And by the way, we're going to be doing tissue decoupage in the workshop. So if any of you are curious or interested about the workshop, um, we have a lot of room yet for you, and you still have a good bit of time to make up your mind because I don't have to pay all the bills for it for about six weeks. So you know you can take you know you take your time. But it's going to be the best one ever. We are going to have a blast. I'm teaching all three days. Because why? Because I can. That's how I had to convince myself. I always thought I needed a co-teacher. I don't need a co-teacher. I have enough wind. <laughs> and I always got Javi and Diane and Lauren, you know. If I get tired, they're always there. And then you guys, too. A lot of you teach. So, hey, we're good. We don't need another one. Are the Impress Arts pens stinky? No, they're not. Um... But anyway, Connie Tienda, you're new to us. Howdy. But anyway, so I did that. And then I, um, 
what did I do? I think I just did the uh, Krylon over it again when it was done. And then I glued this on and put a Montana blue stone in there. Now what I did that I changed is I had this chain way, way longer. I had it hanging very, very long. And then I thought, huh, well, what would that look like if it was shorter? So I lifted it up so that it was just kind of, the motif here was just kind of falling. This part was just kind of falling in the middle of my chest, and then this was dangling. It looks so much better, guys. You know, some things, this one look good long, and some look better shorter. This isn't short, but I don't know, where's the, here, let's find out how long is it. This is, uh... About 18 with um, an extender. Looks like it's close to two inches. So you can make it 20. So that's that's good for most of us. And I had used the, um, this is a Saturn, this is a turban bead with the Picasso. I'm nuts over this stuff. I can't wait till I can get more of them. They usually sell quick. There's a few left though on the website if you want to check. We we're really expanding our glass bead section. Did you get much on today? Yeah, I got more. Oh, she got, <laughs> she got them all. We have, the most gorgeous colors of Czech glass pearls. They're Preciosa brand, which is high end. It's like the next thing to Swarovski without the Swarovski price tag. And we have salmon pink and mint and cerulean blue and silver and gold and cream and I don't remember. I think I got just about every color there was. Coral. And the coral, yeah. Oh, that's the Pantone color too. Um, and they're. Um, all, I think pretty much eight millimeter for now, and then I'll branch out from that. If I find out there's interest in it, I'll get sixes and tens and stuff. But um, for me, eight millimeters is like the starting place always. So anyway, you can go check those out. But those are the check beads here, and then these are the um, leopard skin jasper faceted gemstone beads. We still have a little bit of this chain too on the side. And then what I did to change this up is I put these on with these great big jumps because I had to. I, the only other thing I could do would be drill it, and there's not quite enough room to drill it. So I had to go with a big jump because my standard eights will never go through there. I even had tens, they wouldn't go through there. I'm not sure what these twelves or fourteens, and they're heavy. Um, so I put them through, and they were fine. And then I started hanging stuff from them, and I didn't graduate them. I made them all the same length. And the more I put them on, I'm just banging into each other, and they just look like an afterthought and not good. Plus, I had put another little jump ring across here with a little dangle on it, just to kind of keep them together. That was a dumb move. It doesn't work out either. So, um, Javi, what did you do? Oh, you put, this, you put it in this category. Um, so I shortened them a little bit. I left this one the same length, shortened these a little bit, and I put a little bit of sparkle here at the bottom. There and also on the end. I don't know where I got these beads. I don't carry them, guys. If I could find them again, I would. But anywho. Um, so I put it that way. And now I love this. I, I don't think I can give it away. <laughs> <laughs> it has to stay with me. I'm sorry. You know, I wish I had one or two of these paint pens extra. I give it for a gift today, but I don't. So they're all used. Anybody want to use green? I have two green. <laughs> That's kind of shabby. Maybe I could um, give you a few of these pieces down here. That'd be nice, huh? That'd be cool. That's, I don't even want to know what this is worth. Cause that's the thing, you know, when you sell supplies, you just start hiking stuff out and you forget about, you know, what it costs. It's probably $100 worth of parts there. Anyway, maybe I'd give some of these away today to our winner. What do you think? And maybe a bit of chain. I've got a little bit of chain here. I've got a pile of chain <laughs> over here. So maybe I'll surprise you with some cool things like that. And uh, maybe I'll throw in, let's see what I got in my bead tray here. Oh, I've got some of these Picassos. Maybe I'll give you a few of these to play with. I have mixed impression Jasper coming in again, too, sometime late next week. About the time the markers come in, that'll be coming in. So if you've been wanting some of that, it's on its way. And I also have the little Czech bellflower caps. I don't know if you remember them. I had them oh, a year or two ago. They're kind of fragile. They're really, really small and delicate. And they come in these glorious, glorious colors. They're just fantastic. Nobody seems to have them. I found this one guy who could get them for me. And uh, I love it when I can get them. 
So anyway, um, let's see what you're saying before I take off today. Watch for the new challenge announcement early in April. Chucks, oh, you're doing a Choxy one. Well, Marcia, I hope the Choxy's here by then. <laughs> it should be. But um, you have to remember when it comes in, you guys have seen what it looks like when it comes in, right? You seen those pictures of those flats? All mixed up. So we have to pounce on it and we have to take it apart. And I have to take a picture. And she has to take a picture. <laughs> yeah, she'll have to picture everything because we don't have it anymore. We got rid of a lot of our pictures when I took it off. So um, it's going to take a little while to get on. But maybe we can put something together. I talked to Marsha about this in Jan. Maybe we could put together a little sample or something for those doing the challenge to get them started with it. We might be able to do that until we can get it on. So we'll, we'll work with you, Marsha. Because uh, that would be cool to do a Choxy challenge. I'm tickled with that. I really am. I'm just trying to think, can we do this? And, ah, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. So let's see what everybody else is saying. Erica's here. Hey, Erica. Sherry James says there's a difference. It's pretty amazing that you can carry 1920. Oh, yes, it is. I still can't believe it. In my book, uh, I talk a little bit about how I met Mel and how he's dealt with me and what it's like to work with him. I know the girls that came out to the seminar in Burbank, which he so graciously allowed me to have. And by the way, that was his idea. He wants me to do another one, but it's just, it's hard. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going, maybe after the book is out, we'll do one. Um, but he, he loved it when the girls came um, and it was his idea, but um, how he is with me, um, it's, it's different. <laughs> That's all I got to say. You guys didn't see the heated discussion we had. <laughs> see, he runs ahead and does stuff, and I'm like, Mel, don't do that. You know that. And then he'll, or he'll tell me I need to do something, and I don't like it. And I'll have to tell him I'm, I'm direct, and he's direct with me, but it works out. And I think he gets a kick out of it. But anyway, because, you know, he's the big boss, and nobody ever told him anything. But I just, I, I don't work for you, Charlie Brown, so I can say what I want. But in a way, I guess I do. So... Anyway, he's a great, great guy and a fantastic mentor. I couldn't, I couldn't ask for better. It's been a, it's been a difficult experience to know Mel Burney and be part of 1928. And it's been a fantastic, exhilarating experience. I've learned so much from him. She says, I love the chicken soup books. Yeah, you know, I've never been a big fan of them, but the guy if a guy sells 500 million books, he must know something, right? And he gave a seminar today, and I'm listening to him, and I'm thinking, well, I know that. Oh, I've done that already. Well, I'm, you know, here I'm here. Yeah, some of it I still need to work on, but so much of it I was already doing. And then when I reflected on the things he said, I realized I have a fantastic story. Um it's going to inspire a lot of people to see what they did. They, you know, I say, um, I came, I started out with 20 bucks and a baby on my hip. They didn't even have 20 bucks and they didn't know a thing about jewelry. So I was ahead of them. I should have been the one that did better, but I didn't, <laughs> but I did. So anyway, yeah, he says I'm his friend. Every, every year when it's New Year's Eve, he writes to me and he'll say, oh, you're, you're, we just have the best friendship. I don't see how it could be better. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, well, it's New Year's Eve and you're drinking. So. <laughs> anyway, most difficult things are the most rewarding. Yeah, they say if it doesn't require any effort, maybe it's not worth doing. I don't know. So anyway. Michelle says, have a great weekend. I have to, uh, have to duplicate those sentiments. We got to get going. But um, thank you all for coming. Very good for something that we kind of did off the cuff, you know, that's not our normal schedule. But um, I will be back Sunday. So I got to figure out something to show you for Sunday. Oh, don't worry, I will. And somebody's going to win today and somebody's going to win Sunday too. So... After the video is over, be sure you get your comments in because you can't win if you didn't comment. You don't get included into the, if you're just watching and lurking, you don't get included in the drawing. And that's a shame because I, I've got some nice stuff that I'm giving away. 
So comment, and uh, we will see you on Sunday, same time, 4.30 p.m. EST. Sunday is March 10th, 2019. Thanks for showing up, guys. We think you're the best. Chicken, want to say anything? Chicken, got something to say? Chicken, got something to say? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, very good. There he is. Okay, love you all. Come back on Sunday. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.